With the recent news of North Carolina's 9th Congressional District getting a new special election at the end of 2019 due to the closeness of the election results and the alleged vote of fraud. That got me thinking, what was the closest election in U.S. history? You might have think it would have been Florida in the 2000 presidential election, but that would be incorrect. Here's the story of the closest election in American history. Let me set up the story. The year was 1974, with the resignation of President Richard Nixon and the fall of the Watergate scandal. It was a hard year to run as a Republican. Longtime Republican Senator Norris Cotton decided to opt out of the fourth term. So then Representative Lewis Wyman announced his candidacy for the Republican nomination for Senator in New Hampshire. On the Democratic side, former New Hampshire Attorney General and Insurance Commissioner John A. Durkin announced his candidacy. Both candidates easily sailed through their respective primaries. As the date of the election approached, the Republicans became increasingly nervous due to the unpopularity of Republican President Gerald Ford and admitted it would be a tough seat to keep. On Election Day 1974, Wyman won with 355 votes out of more than 200,000 cast and was pronounced the winner. Durkin soon demanded a recount and won by 10 votes, and Republican Governor Meldrum Thomas Jr. begrudgingly gave Durkin a provisional certificate of winning the election. Soon after, though, Wyman demanded a recount, in which he won by a mere two votes. Thompson took away Durkin's certificate and gave it to Wyman. As a last option, Durkin petitioned the Senate to review the case as the Senate had the final say on all elections to its body. So on January 13, 1975, the Senate Committee on Rules and Administration tried to resolve the matter. Composed of five Democrats and three Republicans, you would have thought it would have been solved then and there. But due to Alabama Senator James Allen, who was a Democrat, voting with the Republicans to certify Wyman's victory, that left the seat in dispute. The next day, on January 14th, the full Senate took up the case, but soon sent it back to the Committee on Rules. The, next, the Committee on Rules created a panel to review the election and 3,500 questionable ballots from the election. I should mention, during this time, even though Wyman did technically have a provisional certificate of winning the election, he did not vote on any of the bills in the Senate due to the controversy surrounding his victory. After six weeks of arguing and debating, Durkin took up Wyman's offer for a new special election. The Senate declared the seat vacant, and next day, Governor Thompson appointed former Senator Norris Cotton to hold the seat until the special election. On September 16, 1975, the special election was held, and this special election saw record-breaking turnout, and Durkin won by 27,000 votes, or about a margin of 10%. A few days later, Durkin was sworn in, increasing the Democratic majority in the Senate to 61. Even though it may have seemed that the Democrats had won the battle, now with their filibuster-proof majority during the administration of an unpopular Republican president, it actually may have helped the Republicans even more. They had been divided for years and in the minority. This election helped to unify the ranks and, and take the majority under Howard Baker in 1981. And that's the story of the closest election in American history.